welcome you all to this morning service. We want to enter into a time of prayer. And wherever you are, I want you to connect your spirit with my spirit. Even as we speak to our Father right now this morning. I want you to just open up your mouth. Just declare the glory and thanks of God upon your life. Declare his goodness in your life today and in all the days that he has seen, seen and kept you through. Just lift up your voice and magnify the name of the Lord. Father, we give you praise, we give you glory. We honor you, we exalt your name, Lord. We worship you, King of Kings. We say thank you. Thank you for seeing us throughout every situation. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your favor. Thank you for your grace. 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 We worship you, Lord. We say thank you. We lift up our hands and we worship you. We give you all the glory. In the name of Jesus, we say be thou glorified. Be thou exalted. Be thou magnified. In the name of Jesus, Father, we we say glory, glory, glory. Oh, we magnify your name. You alone deserve the praise. You alone deserve all glory. Oh, we magnify your name this morning. We magnify your name this morning. You alone deserve the praise Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are still praying. I want you to lift up prayer and say, Lord, even as I'm in your presence, wherever I am, I connect with your spirit and I am blessed by today's service. Now, whatever it is that you have for me, I'm receiving it in a full dose. I open up your mouth and pray, Lord, I receive your word. Your word comes to me with power and comes to me with might. I receive every word into the depths of my spirit. By the power of the Holy Ghost, from on high, you reveal yourself to me, Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus, Hallelujah. Finally, I want you to connect and declare that today's service will be a turning point in your life where you will draw closer to the Spirit of God, where you will know God on a deeper level, that today there's going to be an impartation into your spirit, that you are having a personal encounter with the Holy Spirit through the man of God. Open up your mouth and pray. By the power of the Holy Ghost, in the name of Jesus, Lake of Oh, we give you praise. Yes, Lord, I connect to your spirit in the name of Jesus, Lake of Oh, Shababa, Lake of Oh, Shandelebe, Rakabanda, Lake of Oh, Shababa, Lake of Oh, Shandelebe, in the name of Jesus. Just lift up your hands and just worship him. Just thank you for an awesome time. Oh, Sandara Basson de Rebecca. Libro Sandara Babaha. Even as we enter into a time of praise and worship, still in the mood and in the spirit of connecting, I want you to lift up your hands wherever you are and just magnify the name of the Lord. Libro Sandara Basire. Rebo shanda kababanda liya papa, Roman de le bo shanda ba, lege bo shanda la baba, lebe le bo shanda le le ba sayada, rige bo shanda la ba son de le bo shaka ba, 
Somebody, wherever you are, lift up your hands to heaven.
bless the Lord and we give him praise for another day like this in his presence. David said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Oh, to God be the glory that we can come together again as God's people to receive the word of life, that we can receive strength and help in time of need. Shall we bow our heads for prayer as we get ourselves ready to receive the word of the living God? Father, in the name of Jesus, we give you thanks, we adore you, we hallow you, we magnify you. The Lord, you have given us grace to see another day and to come into your living presence. We ask, O oh God, that as we gather before you, let the words of our mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in the sight, O oh Lord, our God and our Redeemer. We ask, O oh God, that you will grant us a heart of reception and a heart of understanding that as we receive your word, it shall do us good. Thank you, O oh God. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen, somebody. Hallelujah. Well, I bring you greetings in the name of the Lord and bless the name of the Lord for seeing us all together again and wherever you are, as you hear the sound of my voice, I bless the Lord for your lives and I declare that the blessing of the Lord that makes rich and adds no sorrow shall come to you wherever you are and the goodness of God shall overshadow your tabernacle. The Lord shall be the pavilion and the Lord shall be the strong hedge around your life so that the sun will not smite you by day nor the moon by night. The grace of our God shall keep and preserve you and I declare over your lives that it shall be well with you. Let the favor of the Lord come upon you. Let the goodness of the Lord engulf you let the peace of God which transcends all understanding bring you sustenance in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I thank God that we are gathered again to receive the word of life. And today, I want to share with you the word of the Lord from Mark chapter number 4 from the 21st verse. Reading on. And... He said unto them, Is a candle brought to, the, to be put under a bushel or under a bed and not to be set on a candlestick? For there is nothing hid which shall not be manifested. Neither was anything kept secret, but that it should come abroad. If any man have ears to hear, let him hear. Verse number 24, Mark 4. And he said unto them, Take heed what ye hear. With what measure you met, it shall be measured to you. And unto you that hear shall more be given. For he that hath, to him shall be given. And he that hath not, from him shall be taken, even that which he hath. Hallelujah. The 24th verse again of Mark chapter number 4 says, And he said unto them, Take heed what ye hear. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Take heed what you hear. Come again with me to Luke chapter number 8. Luke chapter number 8 from the 16th verse. Luke number 8 from the 16th verse. Let's hear the word of the Lord. No man, when he hath lighted a candle, covers it with
with a vessel or puts it under a bed but sets it on a candlestick that they may which enter in may see the light for nothing is secret that shall not be made manifest neither anything hid that shall not be known or come out verse number 18 Luke 8 take heed therefore how you hear for who sure about her to him shall be given and who sure about hath not from him shall be taken even that which he seems to her hallelujah Luke 8 18 Take heed therefore how you hear. So this morning I speak on the subject. Take heed what you hear and how you hear. Hallelujah. The Bible says that Jesus, after he spoke about the parable of the sower, then came to his disciples and made this declaration to all. And said that no man, when he has lighted a candle, puts it under a bushel or under a bed. But rather he puts it on the candlestick so everybody would experience the light. And he said that there is no hidden thing that will not come out. There is nothing hidden. That will not be exposed. Jesus said this and then said to his audience and to everybody that take heed what you hear. Hallelujah. Take heed how you hear. There are some few lessons in this scriptures we have read. The people of God I want to bring to you today as you hear the sound of my voice wherever you are. The things we hear and what we hear influence our lives so much. And it's so important for us to know and understand that all around us in our world today, there is so much that is being articulated in speech. There is so much that is being said all around the world from the social media electronic media so much is being telecast so much is being said so much is being told us and all around the globe there is information crossing up and down front and back and across news is coming vertically horizontally and across and for most of the things that we are hearing produces panic produces fear and produces uncertainties there is so much that is coming to us and we cannot assimilate them all we cannot even understand them all and we do not even know what to do we cannot even tell which is truth which is a lie which way do we handle them what do we do and for all the things that we hear how do we even handle them so we will know what to do but glory be to God that Jesus could identify with us and said that there is nothing secret or there is nothing hidden that will never come to the open Anything that is hidden, no matter what, no matter how long it takes, the truth will come out one day. Hallelujah. I believe that time shall tell it all. Hallelujah. Take heed what you hear. 
take heed how you hear. This is so crucial. The things we hear, the things we see, they are designed to do two things in our lives. They either make us or unmake us. They either bless us or bring us into bondage. They either confuse us or intimidate us. But regardless of whatever you hear and whatever the source of what you and I are hearing, Jesus says that we should be cautious of what we are hearing and we should be cautious of how we are hearing. The reason is this. If what you are hearing, you don't hear them well, they could mess you up, they could influence you, they could create panic, they could create unrest, they could create disease, they could create discomfort, they could destroy your faith as a child of God. Because so much is going on, everybody seems to be saying something. Everybody seems to be explaining something from every quarters. Somebody is saying something. But I came this morning to let you know, child of God, I came this morning to let us know that no matter what we are hearing, Jesus is telling us that there is no hidden secret that shall not be uncovered. There is nothing out there that we are hearing that is meant to frustrate us, that is meant to intimidate us, that is meant to control us, that is meant to marginalize us, or that is meant for any kind of agenda. Jesus said the most important thing is that as for hearing, we shall hear. So much will be told us, but one thing is needful. The Bible says in John chapter number 10, from verse number 1, Jesus said, He is the good shepherd. And when he puts forth his sheep, he goes before his sheep. It says that the good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep or for the flock. And then he said, My sheep knows my voice. My sheep hear me. For a stranger's voice, they will not follow. There are so many voices in our day and time. And especially for the past few weeks, many voices are speaking. Many voices are becoming more louder and louder. Everybody seems to be saying something that threatens our very existence. Everybody is saying something to sort of have a kind of influence or have a kind of way in our lives. But the Bible declares that heaven and earth would pass away. The only thing that will not pass away is the word of God. And so when there seems to be so many voices and so much articulation of speech, so much information and so much knowledge, and everybody seems to be saying something. And so at a particular time, you don't even know which one to believe and which one to accept and which one to work with. But the Lord has given me a word for you, child of God, that you should know exactly what you are hearing and you should know exactly how you are hearing. Because you see, whatever you hear can have a negative impact on your life based on how you listen or how you hear it. Hallelujah. So I came to let you know that there are so many voices out there. But the voice of the Lord is what you and I need to hear. The voice of the Lord is the word of God. The voice of the Lord is a voice of peace. The voice of the Lord is a voice of joy. The voice of God is a voice of certainty. The voice of God is the voice that brings joy and peace and settles the matter. When every other thing seems to create panic and fear and disease and discomfort and generates hopelessness, you, the child of God, 
can respond to those words with a pinch of salt because you know that all things would pass away but it's only the word of God that will not pass away so Jesus tells us that anything that is hidden there is a time that it will be uncovered whether we know it or not whether it brings fear whether it brings panic whether it intimidates us whether it brings us into bondage whether it produces uncertainty I want you to be assured and I want you to know that in the midst of it all the voice of God will stand out. The Bible says in 1 Kings chapter number 19, after the episode of the Camel encounter with Elijah and the 250 prophets of Baal, after they had declared the God who is the real God, the God who is the true God that must be believed, in chapter number 19, Jezebel was told of what had happened to the prophets of Baal and she rose with anger and determination that so shall it be done to Elijah the prophet of God as he had done to the prophets of Baal but certainly the truth of God will stand the test of time voices may declare their opinions knowledge would be on the increase People will say whatever they want to say and do whatever they want to do. But I declare by the name of the Lord that it is only the word of God that will stand. And the Bible said the prophet Elijah himself was terrified by the sure word of fears and anger and determination and evil that was determined against him by Jezebel. Jezebel is a spirit that manipulates and controls. Jezebel is a spirit that hates God and hates the worship of God. Jezebel is a spirit that promotes any other thing that brings people to the place of not serving God and worshiping the living God. But that spirit of Jezebel we crush in the name of Jesus. Any power, any spirit that will not make us serve the living God. Any spirit, any power, any action, any word that will want to take our attention from serving the living God. Then we declare that spirit to be the spirit of Jezebel. Because the spirit of Jezebel will not honor God. The spirit of Jezebel will not believe in the Most High. The spirit of Jezebel will not revere God. The spirit of Jezebel will want to control and manipulate everybody. But I came to declare in the name of the Lord that the spirit of Jezebel cannot intimidate the church of God forever. For the Bible declares that greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. The spirit of Jezebel cannot and shall not dominate us. The spirit of Jezebel cannot manipulate us. The spirit of Jezebel cannot mess us up. The spirit of Jezebel cannot misdirect us. The spirit of Jezebel cannot bring us into the stronghold of of fear. The spirit of Jezebel cannot torture us. The spirit of Jezebel cannot torment us. But by the name of the Lord, we shall prevail. We shall overcome. We shall overcome. We shall overcome. If God be for us, who can be against us? If he spared not his only begotten son, shall he not by him also deliver us from every snare of the fowler and oppressions of the powers of darkness? Take heed what you hear. Take heed how you hear. And Bible said, Elijah, ran for his life and rose up and ran to Mount Horeb and the Lord and he laid on the juniper tree and the Lord came and said to him Elijah what are you doing here he said Lord I have been so zealous for you and they have killed all your prophets and I alone have been left but they pursue my life and the Lord said rise eat some food for the journey ahead is greater then again after he had eaten and drunk some water the Lord brought him some more food he said eat for the journey ahead is greater but arise and go your journey and Bible declared that whilst he was on Mount Horeb the wind blew strong wind blew and the Lord was not in the strong wind the earthquake came. The Lord was not in the earthquake. Fire came. 
The Lord was not in the fire. The mountains ran. The rocks broke up. But when all the wind and the storm and the earthquake and the fire had ceased and passed on, then the voice of the Lord came forth unto him. Hallelujah. The still voice of the Lord came. Folks, in the midst of all voices, for you as a child of God, you must be still and calm and quiet and know that your God is in control. Hallelujah. Every voice that comes has an assignment. Every voice you hear has a purpose. It's either to encourage you, it's either to strengthen you, it's either to reassure you, it's either to give you focus, it's either to make you know that yes, it's turbulent, but certainly it shall pass away because no situation or condition is permanent. The storms may come, the wind may blow, the earth will quake, fire will come, but beyond all this, the Lord shall speak so the bible says that take he what you hear take he how you hear the things we hear all the time forms a kind of impression on us the things we hear all the time influence our actions the things we hear all the time makes us to do things i've met people that on their own we say they hear voices and the voices tell them sometimes to kill themselves the voices ask them to do things but i say to them that that is not the voice of god because the voice of god will not kill the voice of god will not destroy the voice of god will not make anyone take his or her life the voice of god would bring salvation the voice of god would bring deliverance the voice of god will bring settlement the voice of god will bring the baptism of the holy spirit the voice of god will bring healing the voice of god will bring restoration any voice that is not bringing you salvation any voice that is not bringing you deliverance any voice that is not drawing you closer to your god any voice that is not bringing you baptism of fire baptism of life baptism of joy baptism of glory any kind of voice that is not bringing you the assurance of salvation any voice that is not bringing you liberty but brings you bondage is not the voice of god but i came to declare to you that any voice that is the voice of god brings life he said, I came that they may have life and have it more abundantly. What kind of voice are you hearing, child of God? What kind of voice are you hearing? What kind of news are you hearing? And what is the source of what you are hearing? What is the source of what you are hearing? If it is from God, it shall bring you deliverance. If it is from God, it shall bring you certainty of hope. If it is from God, it shall bring you deliverance. If it is from God, it shall bring you assurance. If it is from God, it shall bring Holy Ghost baptism. If it is from God, it shall bring you liberty or freedom. If it is of God, it shall bring you peace and joy. Hallelujah. So he said, As for hearing, you will hear. But you must be able to pray to God, child of God, that you will be able to discern and to know the source of the voice you are hearing. Because the voice you hear can mess you up. The voice you hear can intimidate you. The voice you hear can destroy you. The voice you hear can influence you to do what you're not supposed to do as a Christian or as a child of God. The voice you hear can make you do things that you yourself may not have decided to do. But because of the powers behind those words you hear, they can make you do things. And therefore I came to say to you today, by the Spirit of the Lord, that any voice you are hearing, which is not the voice of God, I stop it in the realm of the Spirit. I confront it in the realm of the spirit. I overthrow it in the voice of God. I overthrow it by the name of the Lord. But I ask that the spirit of God shall bring you the word of the Lord that shall bring you liberty. The spirit of the Lord by the word of the Lord shall bring you direction. Therefore I say to you, any word, any utterance, any prophecy, 
any revelation, any vision, any utterance which does not contribute to your faith, you must eradicate it. Did you hear me? Any voice, any utterance, any speech, any articulated word, any kind of communication, any vision, any dream, any explanation, any, any, any whatever, which does not contribute to your faith, which does not enhance your faith, which does not promote your faith, which does not assure you of liberty and life, does not assure you of progress and peace, you must eradicate it. Because if you keep it, it will mess you up. If you keep it, it will destroy you. If you keep it, it will frustrate you. If you keep it, it will bring you into bondage. But I came to declare to you by the Spirit of the Lord. I came to declare to you by the Word of the Lord. I came to declare to you by the Spirit of the Lord. I came to declare to you that the Bible declares that every word that comes to us shall minister grace. Is anybody listening to me? This is a good word. Take heed what you hear. What are you hearing, brother? My sister, what are you hearing? And what is the things you are hearing doing to you? Keep focus. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Who for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross, despising the shame. The Bible declares it in the Apostle Paul said, What do you mean to break my heart when he found himself in the house of Philip the Evangelist? And the prophet Agabus came and declared to him that that seared the Lord. This is what shall happen to the man that owns this schedule or belt in Jerusalem. And after they have said this to the Apostle Paul, because of the prophetic word from the prophet Agabus, they said to him that he should not go forth to Jerusalem. But the Paul said to them, Do you mean to weep to break my heart? I'm not only ready to suffer in Jerusalem for the Lord, but I'm also ready to die. Because the Lord has spoken to me already that bounds and affliction await me in Jerusalem. You must always know what God is saying and you must always understand what God is saying. If you do not know what God is saying and if you do not understand what God is saying, then people are going to manipulate you. People are going to kick you like the football. People are going to misuse you. People are going to mishandle you. But when you know, so the Bible says, in John chapter number 8, verse 32, it says, And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. And that if you continue in his word, then are you his disciples indeed. It's so important, beloved, to understand what you hear to comprehend it, to interpret it, and to know the purpose and the essence of what you have heard. Because if you do not know the source of what you are hearing, and if you do not understand what you are hearing, it will destroy you. That is why I came to make you understand the word of the law. But take heed, be very careful, be cautious the things you are hearing and the source of the things you are hearing and what the things you are hearing is or are meant to do to you. If it is the word of God, if it is of God, it shall stand the test of time. Hallelujah. 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 If it is of God, it shall stand the test of time. Because the Bible declares that the secret of the Lord, Psalm 25, verse number 14, the secret of the Lord are with those that revere Him. The secret of the Lord are with those that dignify Him. 
The secret of the Lord are with those that honor him. The secret of the Lord are those that place premium on him. I came to encourage you and to also let you know that you've got to change your attitude and your approach and your response to the word of the living God and to the voice of God. God is always speaking, but in the midst of all the noises, in the midst of all the voices, in the midst of all the announcements, in the midst of all the speaking, in the midst of all the talking, in the midst of all the yelling, in the midst of all the schemes, in the midst of all the operations, in the midst of all the all, the all you must know what you are listening to. You must know what you are giving yourself to. Because you know what? The things you hear, they form your values for life. The things you hear, they influence your thinking. The things you hear, they influence your actions. The things you hear, they influence everything of yours. The things you hear can keep you in bondage forever. The things you hear can be a bedding that would forever keep you in bondage. But I came to release you if you've heard of anything that has affected you emotionally. If you've heard of anything that has affected you financially. If you've heard of anything that has affected your home. If you heard anything that is broken you down. If you heard anything that seems to be casting you down. I came to declare to you that lift up the hanging hands let the feebleness receive strength let that which is lame be taken out of the way for certainly I bring you a sure word of the Lord that shall settle your trouble that shall settle your worrying heart that shall settle your anxiety because I have seen so many times that the things that people have heard has really brought anxiety to them and as long as you have anxiety and fear it affects your health. So it was the Lord's greatest concern of what we hear, number one. And number two, how we hear what we hear. Because if we are not able to define and discern what we are hearing, it's going to destroy us. It's going to destroy our faith. Because we have the weak-minded. We have the unruly. And we have the strong-minded. And in most cases, the weak-minded, the feeble-minded are always swept away with words and voices that they cannot handle. And that is what the Bible tells us that we should take heed what we hear and how we hear. Because if we do not take heed, if we are not able to discern and to pray and to seek the Lord to help us understand. The Bible declared that and the Lord came the way of Daniel and revealed to Daniel the things that must come in the years ahead of Daniel. And the Bible declared that Daniel could not understand. But Daniel sought the face of the Lord and entered into his closet. And the Lord said to Daniel, In the day that you will seek understanding, understanding shall come. Hallelujah. What we need to know and what we need to be doing in these days and times, people of God, is to seek God in prayer. Enter into your closet, shut your door, no distraction, no interruption, and pray. He is just a prayer away and prayer is expressing yourself to your father he is God before even you pray he has already answered he is the answer Christ is the answer to all the problems of our world today Christ is the authentic solution but for that which affects your worldview and influences your core values and dictates to your actions you've got to take heed and know exactly what you're receiving you must be able to exercise your power of choice as a child of God and to make sure that you don't listen to everything that goes on anywhere everywhere you must be able to choose what you want to hear, the things that build you up, 
the things that give you assurance, the things that give you hope, the things that draw you to God. Because the Bible says, draw nigh unto God and he will draw nigh unto you. Resist the devil and he will flee. He will run away from you as though he were in terror. So you must be able to engage your power of choice. You must be able to engage your will and discern by God's spirit to know what you must do with the things you hear. As a child of God, you don't just have to swallow every kind of information thinking that everything that you hear is true. It is only the word of God that would stand the test of time. All may change, but Jesus remains the same. You and I have a sure word of the Lord that we can believe. When we enter into our closet and seek the Lord in prayer, He will speak to us. He will give us understanding. For when the voices are so many and when everybody seems to be speaking, God is quiet. And sometimes we wonder, but why is God quiet when everything else is speaking? And sometimes you will hear people raise this adage, the voice of God, the, sorry, the voice of the people is the voice of God. That cannot be true. The voice of the people cannot be the voice of God. But the voice of God must be what the people will live by. For he said, Man shall not live by bread alone. Man shall not live by bread alone. Man shall not live by bread alone. But by every word that proceeds. It's a continuous thing. God would speak when he would speak. But because he wants you and I to hear him when he speaks, he will never speak when everybody is speaking. No. God will never speak when everybody else is speaking. Because if he speaks and miss all the voices, you cannot hear him. So when everything is still, then he will speak. Create that atmosphere of stillness in your closet so God can speak to you. The psalmist said, the Lord has spoken once, but twice have I heard that all power belongs to the Lord. Hallelujah. We need a sure word from the Lord. We need to hear the counsel of God. The Lord will never be quiet on his people. The Lord will never be quiet on his nation. The Lord will never be quiet on our nation. The Lord will never be quiet on our fathers. The Lord will never be quiet on the sons and daughters. The Lord will never be quiet on our mothers. The Lord will never be quiet on his people. Sometimes when God is quiet, he is still speaking. Hallelujah. Sometimes when God is quiet, he is still speaking. Because he makes all things beautiful in his time. And I know that at the set time of the Lord, he will speak. What God is saying in this time is that take heed of what you are hearing. Because there's no secret under the sun that will not be uncovered. Time will tell it. But he says that if you don't hear properly, then even what you have shall be taken away from you. But if you hear properly and analyze properly and work with what he's saying, then you'll be able to possess more. Because the entrance of God's word gives light. It gives understanding to the simple. Choose what you hear. But I declare to you, Hear the word of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hear the word of the Lord. Because in Romans 10, 17, the Bible says that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of the Lord. What you hear is meant to make you or make you. 
what you hear can produce illumination inside and understanding to you and when you have understanding you can do well and do better when you don't have understanding then you get confused when you don't have understanding then you can be tossed to and fro when you don't have understanding you become unstable but the Bible says in the book of Isaiah the knowledge and wisdom shall be the stability of our times I pray that the Lord shall make his church stable because the church of God shall have wisdom. The church of God shall have knowledge. The Bible says anybody that lacks knowledge, that he marks of God. Today, child of God, wherever you are, under the sound of my voice, I want you to know the word of God shall stand still. The word of God is permanent. The word of God is never temporal. The word of God is certain. The word of God is sure. His voice brings a refreshing as I bring this message to a close I want to encourage you that the word of the Lord says take heed be very careful what you hear be very careful how you hear when you shall enter into your closet ask the Lord Lord grant me understanding Lord show me what to do Lord Explain to me what is going on. Lord, I do not understand. And he will throw light in your path. Because David said in the book of Psalms, he said, thy word is a light unto my path. Your word is a lamp unto my path. And a light. The word of God shall be your light. It shall light your path. It shall light your way. It shall illuminate wherever you will go. So you will know what to do at every given time. He said, A word have I hid in my heart. So I'm not sin against thee. This is the security God has given you and I. That we will check out with everything by his word. The voices you hear. Check it out with the word of God. The things you do, the things that are going around you, check it up. And let the word of God brighten your path and lighten your way. The Lord bless you. As you give yourself to the word of the Lord. When we walk with the Lord in the light of his word, Oh, what glory he sheds on our way while we do his good will. When we walk with the Lord in the light of his word, what a glory he sheds Jesus our Lord 
will illuminate your path and bring clarity to you and give you understanding so in the midst of it all you can figure out and distinctively locate the voice of God he will speak to you in the way you can understand he will speak to you so you will be free God wants you to be free so his voice will be made clear to you let the peace of God who transcends all understanding give your hearts and mind in these challenging times that you can be sitting and sure that your God is on your side he will never leave you as a prey to the predator no matter what goes on in our world he is in control all the world belongs to him without him was not anything made that was made he is in charge your God is in charge Shalom the peace of God keep and preserve you and keep you on top this week you shall be a topic the Lord bless you in Jesus name Amen shall we share the grace together the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore and thou anoint my head with oil my cup runs over surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever Amen Hope you enjoyed today's service thank you so much for staying tuned you can follow us at adonaiglobal.com and on all our social media handles. See you next week. God bless you.